Norman Mailer crave romance. That sweet, ineffable feeling that fuses anticipation and passion, the unmatched thrill of finding someone new, the great unmet lover who might be waiting just around the next corner, not simply another girl, but the other half of your soul. Which was all a bit awkward as later that same day Mailer was due to get married for the sixth time, the second that week, but that is another story, it was November 1980, the day dawning cold and bright in Brooklyn Heights. Mailer, the hard man of American letters, was 57, overweight, with five ex-wives, seven children, money troubles galore and about to marry a 31-year-old woman called Norris Church, the mother of his youngest son. The old man was having second thoughts. Marriage? Again? Starting down that well prod road to vows quickly broken, squawking babies, domestic boredom and sexual betrayal. Why bother? Mailer's thoughts turned inevitably to the path not taken, where romance was waiting for him. All my life, Mailer told his fiancée, all I ever wanted was to be free and alone in Paris. How to last longer in the bedroom while reducing sexual anxiety church was devoted to Mailer from the moment they met until they were parted by death 27 years later. As she later wrote in her memoir, A Ticket to the Circus, if even a little part of him didn't want to marry me, then I didn't want to marry him, look, sweetie, she reasoned. What would happen if you were free and alone in Paris? You'd be walking down one of the boulevards and you'd sit at a sidewalk cafe to have a cup of espresso. A pretty girl would walk by and you would give her one of your 25 cent smiles. Romance can be a man's permission to get away with murder, the break promises, rain egg on. Vows with chilling insight into the hopelessly romantic male soul and as their two-year-old son crawled into bed with them, Church talked Mailer through this hypothetical relationship with the unmet girl in Paris. From first eye contact to coffee and conversation, to dinners and days out, to pregnancy and cohabitation. Church was dead right, of course. If Mailer had been free and alone in Paris, then on every avenue he would have found a woman worthy of love, and then you wouldn't be free and alone in Paris anymore, would you? Church said. Later that day they were wed. First date ideas that are actually bearable It was a long and successful marriage, surviving Mailer's many infidelities, enduring good times and bad until he died in 2007 at the age of 84. Norris Church was the love of Norman Mailer's life. But any man alive can understand what he felt he was giving up on his wedding day. Not simple promiscuity or sexual opportunities with a string of perfect strangers. Mailer dreamed of romance, the yearning that will make a man run away on his wedding day, reject the love of a good woman, abandon his happy home, tear a family apart and start all over again. When boys become men, the obsession with getting your end away is swiftly replaced with the longing to find true, transcendent love. Men are infinitely more prone to the junkie-like hunger for the unmet lover than women. A recent survey by Bedford-based firm The App Developers revealed that men are five times more likely to download a dating app than women. Romance, or rather the desire for romance, means never having to say you're satisfied with what you've got. Romance can be spectacularly destructive. It can be immature, gross, pathetic. Romance can be a man's permission to get away with murder, to break promises, renege on vows. Romance can be the reason you smash up somebody else's home and not just your own. It can be the reason you never really commit to anyone, an excuse to duck domestic boredom forever. Romance is the impulse that encourages a man to run off with an age-inappropriate woman young enough to be his children's nanny. In fact, she usually is the children's nanny. Romance is not always the wise path to follow. Mailer's impulse to be a free man in Paris is easy to understand, but acting on that romantic impulse, walking out on endlessly loving church and their child would not have been the smart thing to do. Crucially, leaving would not have brought Mailer greater happiness than the happiness he knew by staying. If Mailer had abandoned church, he would have missed out on his life's most successful relationship, for what? The promise of the great unmet lover is the ultimate romantic daydream.
when faced with the rough edges of real life, romance can be a refuge, an ejector seat from the claustrophobia of a long-term relationship, an alibi for all manner of bad behavior. But nothing feels better than the moment when the romantic rush kicks in again, promising to transform everything. And so for half a lifetime, men come prowling back for more. What could be more desperately romantic than the hope of being just a flicked finger away from finding someone more loving than your current cold-hearted bedmate? Finding someone to love is hard, wrote Karen Krizinovich in an article headline, I'm 53 and I may have swiped right on your son. Everyone gets rejected and the sooner you get used to that, the better. If you put your pride aside, you'll find an amazing number of quality single people out there. Gaslighting. What is it? Is it happening to you and are you doing it? It is true that the fundamental rules of attraction remain much as they always have. But there was proof we live increasingly in a world of sexual and social isolation when The Sun sent reporter Nick Pritchard to investigate a brothel in South London where all of the workers are sex dolls. Pritchard wrote a thoughtful piece, speaking to voices on both sides of the sex bot debate. Kathleen Richardson, professor of ethics and culture at Leicester's de Montfort University and founder of the campaign against sex robots, told him, in the past most people would develop their tastes through relationships, finding out what they and others like. Now, because of the rise of inanimate dolls and pornography, people are having less sex. We are creating a very dangerous world where people develop damaging sexual tastes outside a normal relationship. They are not told their violent behavior is wrong. Pritchard also spoke to Sergi Santos, founder of the sex robots company Cynthia Amidus, who believes that men of the future will develop an intimate relationship with one special sex doll. I am trying to create something which the user can bond with, said Santos. In a, sex worker, I don't understand what this bond would be good for, but an article about a brothel staffed by sex dolls can only end in one place, with the reporter alone in a bedroom with his rubbery companion. And climbing aboard was the last thing on Pritchard's mind, seeing Jenny comes as a shock, he wrote. This obviously plastic mannequin is more like Chucky than Belle du Jour. Lassie eyed Jenny, retail price £1,700 is made of soft rubber like material, squishy to the touch. It reminds me of the Stretch Armstrong action figure I played with as a child. Sex has never been further from my mind. So, I politely make my excuses and leave. How to look after your penis health like the rise of the sex spots, porn addiction has taken its toll on sex involving more than one person. 24% of users continue gopping at their screens even when they are in a relationship, he had a choice between jerking off in front of his computer or having sex with me, one woman, speaking for millions of women, told New York Magazine in an article called, A Laptop Never Says No. And he chose the computer, but even in this lonely landscape of glassy-eyed sex dolls and laptop love, romance endures. For what could be more ridiculously romantic than dating apps? What could be more desperately romantic than the hope of being just a flicked finger away from finding someone more loving, kind and passionate than your current cold-hearted bedmate? The peak dating app experience is the anticipation, sifting through all those hopeful smiles to find the great unmet lover who will make your life complete. That is why 24% of users continue gopping at their screens even when they are in a relationship. With Tinder, the pretext is to hook up, but the real pleasure is derived from the process, wrote Tomas Chamorro, pre-music professor of business psychology at University College London. He also noted that digital eligibility inevitably exceeds physical eligibility, meaning potential partners always look lovelier in a dating app than they ever will in the flesh. Raising a wry eyebrow, Chamorro Pre Music said it was a wonder that any of the knockouts online are single at all, until you meet them. But this implies that there was a level of authenticity in the past that has been lost and potential partners have invariably been first seen through a hopeful haze of alcohol or strobe lights. The lonely heart sees what it wants to see and romantic longing will always outgun grim reality. Has the mating game truly changed? Only the tech. 
Swiping to the right or left is the new way we have found to maintain eye contact or look away. The pining for romance remains, even, especially, in a time of social and sexual isolation. We live in a world where everyone is spoiled for choice and yet so many seem lonely. We cling to the hope of transcendence. The aching for romance endures. How to have amazing beach sex The trick is knowing when you have had your share. The day comes when you must stop swiping left or right if you are going to give yourself a chance of real happiness. The hardest thing is knowing when to tear up that ticket to foreign parts and look really look at the lover standing in front of you. Romance fades. But if you are lucky, wise and choose well, what remains as love Norman Mailer died of acute renal failure on the 10th of November 2007, by which time Norris Church, who became Norris Church Mailer, had been fighting gastrointestinal cancer for seven years. She would die just three years later. Their last years together were plagued by serious illness, operations and excruciating pain. Romance was a memory now, but it was a memory they shared. As he lay dying, Norman Mailer asked his wife if she remembered their first kiss in the back of a taxi, so very long ago, like it was yesterday, she said. Church was right to stop Mailer running off to Paris on their wedding day. They built a life together, the kind of life that, one day you wake up and realize you could never have with anyone else because there are not enough years in even the longest lifetime. They had two sons, good times and clung together in the face of terminal illness. They were true partners. They loved each other. Church was correct to say that romance can never stay the same. Romance is always transient, either fading away into the either, the fantasy that never had the chance to become fallible flesh and blood, or it leads inexorably to a real-world relationship where it becomes something else. Average penis size, the long and short of it if you know when it is time to stop dreaming of romance with the woman you have yet to meet or the one who looks after your children or the one you have only seen on a screen, then, after many years and a thousand shared experiences, romance is replaced by something far better. This is the hardest task of any man's life and the key to lasting happiness, to know when you are finished with romantic fantasy and when it is time to stop endlessly swiping right and dreaming of the unmet lover. And time to build a life. Romance fades. But if you are lucky, wise and choose well, what remains is love. Now read, you only get five shots at true love how to make a long-distance relationship where cow.